Good evening and welcome to all to this service of evening prayer on Monday the 2nd of August. I hope that you've had a good day today, whatever today has brought you so far. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 47. We sing praises to God, sing praises. Clap your hands together, all you peoples. Or sing to God with shouts of joy. For the Lord most high is to be feared. He is the great king over all the earth. He subdued the nations under us and the nations under our feet. He has chosen our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob whom he loves. God has gone up with a merry noise, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. I sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with all your skill. God reigns over the nations. God has taken his seat upon his holy throne. The nobles of the people are gathered together with the people of the God of Abraham. For the powers of the earth belong to God and he is very highly exalted. Or oh, sing praises to God, sing praises. As Christ was raised by your glory, O oh Father, so may we be raised to new life and rejoice to be called your children, both now and forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading, we continue to hear from the first book of Samuel, this evening reading chapter 19, verses 1 to 18. Saul spoke to his son Jonathan and to all his servants about killing David. For Saul's son Jonathan took great delight in David. Jonathan told David, My father Saul is trying to kill you. Be on, be, therefore be on guard tomorrow morning. Stay in a secret place and hide yourself. I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are, and I will speak to my father about you. If I learn anything, I will tell you. Jonathan spoke well of David to his father Saul, saying to him, The king should not sin against his servant David, because he has not sinned against you, and because his deeds have been of good service to you. For he took his life in his hand when he attacked the Philistine, and the Lord brought about a great victory for all Israel. You saw it and rejoiced. Why then will you sin against an innocent person by killing David without cause? Saul heeded the voice of Jonathan. Saul swore, as the Lord lives, he shall not be put to death. So Jonathan called David and related all these things to him. Jonathan then brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as before. Again there was war, and David went out to fight the Philistines. He launched a heavy attack on them, so that they fled before him. Then an evil spirit from the Lord came upon Saul as he sat in his house with his spear in his hand while David was playing music. Saul sought to pin David to the wall with the spear, but he eluded Saul, so that he struck the spear again to the wall. David fled and escaped that night. Saul sent messengers to David's house to keep watch over him, planning to kill him in the morning. David's wife Michelle told him, if you do not save your life tonight, tomorrow you will be killed. So Michelle let David down through the window 
He flied away and escaped. Michelle took an idol and laid it on the bed. She put a net of goat's hair on his head and covered it with the clothes. When Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, he is sick. Then Saul sent the messengers to see David for themselves. He said, bring him up to me in the bed that I may kill him. When the messengers came in, the idol was in the bed with the covering of goat's hair on its head. Saul said to Michelle, why have you deceived me like this and let my enemy go so that he has escaped? Michelle answered Saul, he said to me, let me go. Why should I kill you? Now David fled and escaped. He came to Samuel at Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. He and Samuel went and settled at Naoth. Here ends our first reading. Song of God's Grace The glorious grace of God is freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. Blessed are you, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for you have blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You chose us to be yours in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before you. In love you destined us for adoption as your children through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of your will. To the praise of your glorious grace, which you freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In you we have redemption through the blood of Christ, the forgiveness of our sins. According to the riches of your grace, which you have lavished upon us, you have made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of your will. According to your purpose, which you set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The glorious grace of God is freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. For our second reading this evening, we begin reading through the book of Acts, starting at chapter 1, verse 1 through to verse 14. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Here ends our second reading. The Magnificat. My spirit rejoices in you, O God. My soul proclaims your greatness. 
My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children for ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. My spirit rejoices in you, O God. My soul proclaims your greatness. So let us pray. So we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for all that we have done, work we have undertaken, conversation we may have held with others, rest and relaxation we may have enjoyed. And we give you thanks for the sunshine that we now see, casting its warmth and light across our land. We thank you, Lord, that you guide us in all that we say and do in life. And we pray that we may show forth the faith we have in you and that you give us opportunities to tell others of your love. As we thought yesterday in our service about how we are fed by Jesus, the bread of heaven, so we too pray that we may be able to feed others. And in our prayer intention, we pray for parishes in their work to support and develop confident Christian disciples. We pray for all who are seeking you, Lord, that they may find you through the words of Scripture, through the example of others, and that they would come to have that living relationship with you that we ourselves enjoy. As we pray for our world, so we pray especially for your peace. We pray for those areas where there is tension, where there is warfare and conflict, where there is division, that it would all come to an end, that your peace would reign, that people would be reconciled one to another, and the barriers that divide would be broken down. We pray especially for the situation in the Middle East, and also for the outbreak of fighting in Afghanistan. Lord, we pray that true peace may be brokered and brought about in those lands which have been so troubled for so long in their history. We continue to pray for those who are adversely affected by the weather, from areas where there is floods and drought, for areas where there is extreme heat or extreme cold. We pray for those in China who have lost their lives in the recent floods there, and also for those who are suffering due to the wildfires in Turkey. Lord, we pray for those who have lost their lives, those who have lost their homes and their livelihoods, for those who feel very anxious about the future and are not sure how things will play out. We pray for the emergency services who work across our world, who are called to these devastating scenes, to try to rescue people, to bring them to safety, for those who set up temporary shelters and try to help their communities and neighbourhoods. Locally, as we pray for those who try to help. We pray especially this evening for the Darwin Food Share as they meet back at St Peter's to provide food for those who are homeless, for those in hostels, for those who otherwise would go without any food at all. We give thanks for those companies and places that provide the food and for all those who will receive it. Lord, we pray for those volunteers who work so hard in trying to provide for others through the food share, through our local food larder and food banks, for those who work at the credit union or through CAP. Lord, we pray for those who are a listening ear, who try to bring comfort and strength to those who find themselves very vulnerable in society 
And we continue at this time to pray for those who feel very isolated and lonely. For those who find themselves in difficult positions due to a lack of work. We pray for those who are our key workers, who go out to work and those who are able to continue to work from home. We pray for those who've been continuing to return to work this week, for the changes that that brings about in their lives, and for those who have the responsibility of keeping their employees and staff safe. We give thanks for an opening up in our hospitals. The visitors are now allowed under certain, certain circumstances to be able to visit their loved ones a little more freely. We pray for the joy that that would bring. We pray for those who work across our hospitals and also all those who work in the medical profession. We pray for those who work in opticians or dentists, for those who try to provide help for people in different ways to help their health. We pray for those who work for well-being, counselling in mental health, and for those that feel very much on the periphery of the health service, but whose roles and responsibilities are essential. As we pray for those who work in our hospitals, we pray for those who work on the front line and those who work behind the scenes. We pray for our hospital chaplains and all that they do in providing pastoral care and support for staff and patients. We pray locally for the emergency services and also for our hospices and hospice at home. We pray for care homes and sheltered accommodation, nursing and residential homes, those who work in them and those who are residents. We pray for carers and all who work in the community, providing support and help for so many. We continue to pray for our GP surgeries, pharmacies and health centres, and for all those places that have been vaccination hubs today, giving thanks for those who have been administering vaccines and those who have received them. Lord, we pray for those who are unwell at this time, those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Amongst them we name before you David, Alan, John, Jeff, Jim, Elaine, Kath and her family, Sister Catherine, Douglas, Steve, Joanna, Judy, Helen, Linda, Scylla, Cheryl, Joyce, Audrey, Alan, Lisa, Roman and Hunter, Tracy, Baby Nala Diane and Jane. Lord, we pray for them and those we name in our hearts, asking that healing and wholeness upon them. And we give you thanks and praise for all those who are on the road to recovery, who due to the skill and care of others are really receiving that healing touch in their lives. And so we pray for those who have died. We pray for those who've died this past day, those who've died recently, for those whose anniversaries occur at this time, and for all those who mourn, that you would bring them your comfort and strength this day. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, on God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. 
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for this service of evening prayer today. It's been good to have your company as always. Tomorrow we have our usual services at 9 o'clock morning prayer and 5 o'clock evening prayer if you're able to join me for either or both of those services. In the meantime, I do hope you have a good evening. You take care, stay safe, look after yourselves and you remain as always in my prayers. Do take care.